G'day, I'm Kim Elman, I'm an F1 photographer and I'm in Saudi Arabia. In fact, this is my third trip to this country in some 16 months. So what's it like? Well, it's certainly different. It's a little controversial, wealthy and beautiful. I've just spent 13 days in the country, mainly in Jeddah. And in just a moment, I'll share with you some of my experiences. First up, this country has some incredible beauty about it. And pretty early on, a couple of people told me that I should go up to the Al Taif Mountains and have a look at one of the world's great mountain roads. So I did. The concierge here at the Shangri-La Hotel arranged a car for me, a Chevy Impala for about 70 US dollars a day, and it was delivered to the hotel. But they delivered it to the hotel completely empty. Not a skerrick of fuel left in it. Luckily I found a fuel station not too far and they fill it up for you. I'll be very keen to see what price we pay here and how it compares with Bahrain. The following morning I set out early and I would have liked to have taken the shortest route but I couldn't. Why not? Well, that'll become evident a little later in the video. I only realised last night that I can't take the quickest route to Al Taif because it goes through Mecca and non-Muslims aren't allowed into Mecca. In fact, there's a roadblock where police man and they will turn you around if you're not a Muslim. I have no idea what's going on here. Hello, okay. I don't know what that was. This is the Al Harda Road. It's a 23 kilometre long ascent that starts on the dual highway and passes through the high Hijaz Mountains, reaches up to just over two kilometres above sea level. This is quite remarkable scenery. It's a very windy road and causes my ears to pop. And there are plenty of monkeys, or are they baboons? I saw this in one of the tourist guides and thought I'd better come up and have a look and it turns out it's only two hours from Jeddah. But in terms of a road, I've seen none quite so spectacular as this one. Having found the spot that I need to be, it's a bit of a hike down these stairs and through some rocks and stuff to get to the exact spot that I want for this shot. But it's quite glorious countryside, isn't it? Well, that is a very impressive section of road that wraps around that peak. And I must say, it wasn't easy to find this particular spot, but this is the spot to shoot from, although unfortunately it's quite messy and very disappointing that people would leave it this way. And if you look up now, that's where I shot these pictures from. And just above us is a gondola that takes you right to the top of the mountain, but that doesn't start till nine, and I wanted to be up there a bit earlier than that. And here we go again, Muslims on the left, and everybody else takes the right-hand road and skirts around Mecca. On the way back to Jeddah, I found a camel farm here with a whole lot of them, just grazing next to the highway. Some of the country's policies are a little confronting to the outside world, and visitors need to be mindful of the cultural differences. I had an interesting discussion with the local police last week while simply taking a photo. I think this is the nicest weather I've ever experienced in Jeddah and I'm down here on the Corniche which has this huge big section that runs down the middle of the road and just behind me is the Jeddah sign which I'm going to use as the thumbnail for this video. Yeah, so there's a bit of bit going on here, apparently not allowed to use cameras but I've got a letter from the government so I know I'm fine. So we'll just see what transpires. So my contact that uh, gave me the note saying I'm allowed to shoot with small equipment, which this is, has uh, now said that she will contact the police on my behalf so this hopefully will end shortly but it's been very interesting 30 minutes now and uh, they're still debating in the background despite the fact that I do have a permit that was an interesting 30 minutes they pulled me up for just taking a photo of this Jetta sign like I've seen millions of photos on the net with this sign so I went over and said look I can work I've spoken to the Ministry of Sport and then there was backwards and forwards and then another copper got involved and another car arrived and in the end, um, my contact uh, at some of the government levels has sent me through my work permit for the Grand Prix, and that got me out of jail. Not that I was ever going to go to jail. They were very good natured about it and polite at all times, but at some point I thought, oh, this has gone on way too long. Just before I head up for dinner, I'm going to the Shang Palace, which is the Chinese restaurant here at the Shangri-La. I thought I'd quickly show you this coffee shop on the ground level. It's fantastic. 
Hi, Hi. hello. Welcome. Welcome to Shaung Palace. This is your table. Thank you. It's fine for you. Okay. Perfect. So first up, we've got some prawn crackers with some nice dips. We have wag, wag your puff pastry and we have crispy spring roll. Next up, it's a couple of non-alcoholic cocktails. Plusum and uh, pash fruit mojito. We got the uh, roast baking duck. Smoked beef ribs with the fried rice. And uh, last thing is uh, shang bala stones as a dessert. Well, that was a standout meal. What was my favorite? Oh, without a doubt, the very first course, the Wagyu beef inside the little handbags. I give that a 9 out of 10, and I don't give a 9 out of 10 very often. If you get into an elevator and click the wrong floor, often double or triple clicking that button deselects it. What you will notice when you're driving around the city is the number of large-scale art installations that are on the major highway. I've come about 30 minutes by cab out to a place called Al Ballad and it's very old, uh, got a lot of character and behind me they're getting some sort of bread. It's Saturday here which is the equivalent of Sunday in my country. Definitely a walk around this area is interesting and I can tell you they park them up quite tight in the street. This is a butcher behind me. I'm not sure what that meat is. What is that? Is that beef or lamb? Lamb. There's plenty of construction going on and there's also plenty of destruction going on. If you're looking to do some praying, you'll be happy to know that there are at least a thousand mosques in Jeddah. This being one of them. Hello. Hi, oh, brother. How are you? Very good, sir. Oh, good. Find me. Shangri-La, please. It's just starting to heat up here today and I thought that's enough. So I'm grabbing an Uber back to the Shangri-La. It's a 26 minute drive and 15 US dollars. So that's a pretty reasonable value. You wouldn't get that in Australia. You wouldn't get it in a lot of US cities. If you come to Jeddah, and I imagine it's the same in Riyadh, you will notice that almost the only way to cross a street is to do a U-turn. And often you'll travel several kilometers past where you want to turn off to do that U-turn and come back. One thing that's plainly obvious in this country is because of the heat, most of the action with families and people coming out happens after dark and there's these great little fast food areas all along the corniche here where people gather uh, after dark and enjoy themselves. This is the seventh floor. There's a pool over here and uh, come night time they open it up as a bar. When I say a bar it doesn't serve alcohol but you can get mocktails and snacks and you get a beautiful view to the city that way and out this side you get to see the track and it's quite delightful voila here you go shakran i've ended up with a kaya cocoa and a pina colada quite elegantly dressed what do they taste like that one's very sweet that's refreshing Here's cheers to the Shangri-La Hotel and the Kaya Lounge. This is the Islamic Biennale. Now I'm not very good with museums, art galleries, but I thought I'd come and have a look at this today and I'm bringing you along for the ride. Five galleries 
and some outdoor areas, which is quite spectacular. I'm not one to go to a museum or an art gallery, but some of the stuff I've seen today is absolutely spectacular. There's also a restaurant here, so I'm having a chicken sandwich and a sparkling mineral water. But I'm so impressed with this. I'm going to suggest if you're in Jeddah, you need to come here. It's right next to the airport. It's free to get in, and the staff, most of whom speak English, are absolutely fantastic. There's also a very nice outdoor area with a few more pieces of art, and what I thought was a completely paved area, but it's not. It's half concrete and half just natural sand. For dinner tonight, I'm staying in at the Shangri-La. I've gone down to the third floor restaurant, Niali. Hello. It's such a lovely place. Everything's open. You can see the track over that side. Out the front there, you can see over the Red Sea. So it's Lebanese cuisine, and I'm not 100% certain I'm a lover of Lebanese cuisine, but let's see how we go, hey? So there is white gyros as food, grapevine leaves, hummus truffle, seafood salad and chili potato. Well I am seriously embarrassed here because the hotel has offered to shout me a meal tonight which I've gladly accepted and I'm going to give you my honest feedback but there's enough food for at least three people if not five. So straight up I had the hummus and I like that and I'm not a hummus eater. The potatoes were different than what I'd normally eat and I like those too but I think I want to go with the beef next. That's in a very sweet sauce and it's very tender. Well, my lovely host has just brought out another meal, some beef cubes on some local bread, but I've just finished a fair whack of the seafood salad, which I thought was excellent. Nice tangy dressing and I ate all of the seafood. I have six plates of food out here and the last one, the beef cubes with what is, I think, tahini, but to me it tasted a bit like a peanut sauce, was the standout. But we're not finished because there's another lamb dish coming. Here we go with a small lamb shank. This is a dish that's actually done at the table for you. This is my lamb. Let's have a taste while Hoda's here. I like it. I like it a lot. Hey, I want to thank you for watching right till the end. I invite you to hit the like button, the subscribe button, and become a member. We have a handful of competitions. There's also extra bonuses for all of my members. You'll find all of my digital images at ProStarPix.com. Go to KimIllman.com if you want one of my F1 photo books, signed driver prints, merchandise or wall art, and for my best images live from the track and all during the week, go to Instagram and search at Kim Illman. Thanks for watching and stay passionate. See the road. Here it is.